Hello everyone. We're just getting started with our live stream tonight. I know no one is here yet, but when this comes back for recording and you see it on our church Facebook page, I wanted to make sure that you um, all see this is the introduction to our Wednesday night Bible study. Hi, Hannah. Glad you made it. Glad that worked out. Thanks for the ginger lemonade teas today. We will hang out here for about five minutes while we're waiting for everyone to jump on and join us for our Bible study. Tonight we are on our public page. We have been doing this on our private group page uh, for the duration of the whole time we have been in this um, new atmosphere and the change of schedule. So uh, many online things instead of in person because of the restrictions of COVID-19. Uh, so tonight we're moving our Bible study from the private group page to the public page. If you're joining us tonight for the first time, um, then please um, come on over and join us. We're glad you're here. Hi, Sharon. Glad that you have made it and that you have joined us. Please feel free to make any comments, uh, prayer requests, or go to the private group page for our church family. Feel free to make those. Um, feel free to go over to the private group page and make um, those uh, prayer requests made known right there, okay? I'm gonna just be quiet for a second while people are getting on. You can find your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 3, and I'm going to just write a couple comments here. The Berg Dolls are here. Glad you guys are here. I'm just trying to get some people who went to a different um, post and get them to find their way. Hello, Tammy. Glad you're here. Welcome. Joining us for our Bible study tonight. My wife just dropped in. Welcome, Karis. Glad you're here. Uh, we're in Colossians chapter 3 tonight, everyone. Make sure you um, grab your Bible. And Wanda's with Sharon. That's great. Glad Wanda is joining us tonight with Sharon. We have a few more minutes before we start. Go ahead and find your Bibles in Colossians 3. And we'll wait just a couple more minutes as people find their places. Don't forget, if you have a prayer request you want to share with the group, please feel free to um, make that known here, or uh, church family is welcome to make it known in the private group page, or private message me, and I'll get it to the church family through our email prayer alert, however you want to share, and how you feel most comfortable is fine. So wherever uh, that works for you would be great. All right, hoping everyone will find their way from the private group page over to here. <clears throat> a little bit of a change here tonight. 
All right, it's 6.30. So I'm sure others are gonna be finding their way or they'll see the recording as we go along. So <clears throat> I wanna get started with just a couple of announcements tonight as uh, you find your Bibles. Turn to Colossians chapter three. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, make the note that the ladies' Bible study and the men's Bible study um, that we do on Sundays um, uh, when we're normally meeting together, and uh, right now online, we're doing the men's Bible study on Mondays, and we're doing the ladies' Bible study on Sunday mornings at 9. Um, we are uh, going to take a two-week break from those. Both studies are complete. And uh, we'll come back in a couple weeks, so keep your eye open, uh, eyes open for what's coming. And uh, we'll, you can go to my wife's page, Karis Holloway, and you will find the links needed there. Um, or, you know, that's where she goes, or her YouTube channel uh, for her live stream. Mine is normally a pre-recorded. I might switch to live stream for the new Bible study. I'll just have to see. Guys, please let me know if uh, there's a specific time that might work if um, something like uh, Monday at uh, five o'clock works for you, just as you're getting home from work uh, for a 30 minute Bible study. Uh, let me know uh, what might be the best for everyone to find their way. It wouldn't make sense to do a live Bible study unless um, a live stream, unless we can get a lot of guys to actually come at the same time. So hopefully uh, we can make that work. And then also our church services are changing slightly this week. As you all know, you've gotten the email. I want to remind you again that we are going to be doing uh, a Sunday morning church service this week for the first time in person. Some people have come and said to me through email or texting, I can't come. I don't feel comfortable. That is okay. Not a problem at all. Uh, if you're especially in that risk group uh, in the older age or some health problems, uh, please, um, Take a note of uh, making the decision that you feel is best before you and the Lord. Um, we're going to be doing social distancing. You're going to pay attention to that when you come in and where you can sit. And we'll have pews in between each um, family group. And uh, we'll have our service on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Everything else will remain online, okay? And so hopefully that will be a help. All right. If you have questions about church service, please uh, contact me. Uh, here at the church office, my email, text, whatever, wherever, and we'll uh, get things rolling for you and help you understand what's going on and get you the information that you may have not received yet. And now we go to our Bible study tonight, Colossians chapter 3. We continue our study in the book of Colossians. We have gone chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And tonight, I don't have uh, my helpers to uh, be able to do the recording in the sanctuary and, and all the special effects with a special mic. So it's just me and my iPhone and keeping it close enough for me. I have to do it in my office. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, but we're in Colossians chapter 3 and we're looking at verses 10 and 11. We're in the, uh, the uh, passage of scripture about putting on and putting off. Colossians chapter uh, 3 and Ephesians chapter 4 both talk about this very important principle and we're in the midst of the discussion. So last week we saw the put off section and we were talking about the specific areas to put off. The week before was to mortify specific areas of immorality and now we come to uh, a, um, <clears throat> an, an in-between section of the put off and put on when we come to verses 10 and 11 that gives greater clarity and it's an encouraging passage. It's a challenging passage. I'm looking forward to it as we dive in tonight. Let's read our two verses that we'll study this evening. We look at Colossians chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 10 and then 11. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we do ask tonight that you would guide this time of Bible study. We ask that you would encourage and strengthen us in our walk with you, draw us close to you and make us more like you. We pray that you would help as we listen to the teaching of your word, that we with undivided attention would receive the word of God 
and apply it to our lives. And we do also ask you would enable me as I preach tonight and teach this passage that you would fill me and enable me by your spirit. And Father, we do continue to pray for wisdom in the next steps that we take regarding all that goes on in our world uh, with the COVID-19. We pray, Father, that uh, you would guide our steps, help us not to walk in fear, help us to follow you, give us wisdom and discernment in the decisions that uh, you would lead us to. In Jesus' name, amen. So Colossians chapter 3 tonight, and we're looking at verses 10 and 11. I'm thinking as we begin the, the Bible study this evening, I'm thinking specifically about that time where you try to start eating differently because you've gained some weight, or maybe your doctor just took your blood work and you found out that your cholesterol was high, whatever it may be, and you say, okay, got to do something different. And so when you start working on that, you know, and after these weeks, eight, nine weeks of sitting at home, um, not being able to go out as much and not as much exercise and we're out of our routines, probably uh, a a lot of us probably gain some weight Um, or we're just not doing the same things we used to. So we have new outcomes. And so these outcomes came because of the result of what we've been doing. So if we want a different outcome, we need to do something differently, right? So it's not just that I need to stop eating the junk food or the processed food, uh, the fast food restaurants and so forth, but I need to replace it with something. I can't just not eat that and eat nothing. I must put that food off and I must put on uh, food that would give me the outcomes I'm desirous of. Now, sometimes we continue the same pattern of doing the same exercise routine and the same um, diet uh, that, we, that we place ourselves on, the, the way that we eat, and um, we don't lose weight. And then we say, I don't know why I haven't lost weight. Uh, and then we look back and we, we have not changed anything. So if what we've been doing gets us what we have and we don't like that, then continuing doing what we've always done isn't going to change anything. Continuing to do the same thing, expecting different results. We all know that's the definition of insanity, right? And so what I knew, do need to do then is I need to begin, um, I need to begin uh, doing something different. If I want different outcomes, I need to start making different dietary choices. I need to start making different exercise choices and the like, right? I think the same is very, sim- it's very similar to our walk with the Lord. We're in a position where maybe we've wandered from the Lord or we're struggling in our walk with God and we're looking for a closer walk with him. So I'm going to need to put off some of the things that's allowed me to wander away and I'm needing to then put on things, so I start making choices that are greater or more in line with scripture. Our relationship with the Lord is one of faith and hard spiritual um, work, uh, spiritual disciplines that's enabled by his spirit. This relationship is available to all who believe. Isn't Isn't that wonderful? This relationship is available to all who believe. Now we come back to Colossians chapter 3, we go to verse 10, and we see a couple instructions here, a couple reminders. The new man has a different source of strength. He is, um, the new man is in the image of God, the image of the one who has created all mankind. Okay, so there's a different source, it's a greater source, and uh, a a tremendous uh, source for the new man as opposed to the old man. And then verse 11 begins with some distinctions, some comparisons or some contrasts. Starts here. Neither Greek nor Jew. There is no distinction between nations in the church. You know, all God's people say amen, right? There are no distinctions between nations in the church. All within the church are to be regarded and treated as brethren. Um, This is how we should treat one another, because we are all on the same level. We are all sinners. We are 
all in need of Jesus. We are all lost without Jesus and his shed blood, neither Greek nor Jew. There's no distinction between these. Now, there was a great distinction in culture back in the Bible times between these two. And so, and we have distinctions today between nations that, we'll, that, that many will make. It's just timeless truth. And the Bible is reminding us here, this distinction is, uh, is not to be found in the church. This difference between there is none before God. The ground is level at the cross. The second is circumcision and uncircumcision. No one has been able to receive the gospel because of circumcision. No one has not received the gospel because of uncircumcision. The next one is barbarian. You see the pattern that's going here? A barbarian. Uh, no one is a excluded from the gospel because they live like uh, an uncivilized person. They don't have polished manners and the like, okay? And then Scythian. This is an interesting word. This word is the, this is the only place this word appears in the New Testament. It is um, a, a name that is connected to ancient geography to the people who lived in the north and the northeast of the Black and Caspian Seas. Um, and it's a region that reaches uh, far into uh, the unknown countries of Asia. So this is the general area that we're talking about. The name was almost synonymous in this day with the word barbarian. It was a ferocious, uncivilized people. They were regarded as wild and a wild and savage race, okay? So the meaning is that even such a ferocious, wild, savage people were not excluded from the gospel, but they were welcome as any other people and were entitled to the same privileges as all others within the church. My benefits in my relationship with Jesus Christ because of his saving grace is not because uh, that I have polished manners. It's not because uh, I am a civilized culture. It's not because of certain works which I've done and it's not because of a specific nation from which I come. It is because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It is available to all who believe. No one was excluded because he belonged to the most rude and uncivilized portion of mankind. It is often the great and the mighty that uh, among us that we will often lift up higher and pour our poor lofty praise. Um, but isn't it interesting in scripture that we often see that it's the weak and the, the lowly that the Lord will shine his strength through. Um, the Lord chooses Nicodemus to go to his house. The Lord sees Paul and Paul's not used greatly because he's so powerful and great. He even speaks in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 of saying how weak he was physically and asking the Lord to remove that weakness. And God's response was, no, I'll, I'll give you my grace. And in your weakness, you'll be strong because of my grace, not because of you. There was an old preacher. This is a true story. Many years ago, that was met by one of his deacons on a Sunday morning. No one else had shown up to church yet. The deacon showed up early because the deacon had something he needed to confront the pastor on before the Sunday morning service. Can I say just on a side note, I know this is just an illustration, but um, I really appreciate that our church doesn't do that, that they don't come to me on a, a Sunday morning right before the message and want to confront me on something that they don't agree with and the like when you're trying to get your heart ready to be able to preach and to feed the flock. And if you're listening to this and you don't come to our church, I urge you, don't do this to your pastor. Wait until the Sunday services are over. Wait till another day. Give him a chance to be able to minister without that weighing down for this kind of confrontation. This deacon comes and he says, I came early to meet you. I have something on my conscience I need to say to you. Pastor, I think there must be something radically wrong 
in your preaching and in your work. In the last year, we have only seen one person added to the church. And at that, he's just a boy. The pastor listened patiently. He was weighed down. No one had to tell him that there was only one person added to the church. He knew that. It already grieved and, and burdened him that more souls weren't being saved. The deacon himself could not actually share of any that he had added. He had uh, seen saved, witnessed to, and they trusted Christ and became a part of the church. It's not the responsibility just of the pastor, right? Well, the pastor looked at him with damp eyes and he said, I feel it. I feel it all. I feel it, but God knows that I've, I've tried to do my duty and I trust him for the results. And the deacon responded with even stronger confrontation. He said, I, I know, I know, but by their fruit you shall know them, Pastor. And one new member, and he only being a boy, seems to be ra uh, rather a slight evidence of true faith and zeal. I don't want to be hard, is what he says. Too late. You are hard. <laughs> I don't want to be hard after saying all that. It's too late. But I have this matter on my conscience, and I don't, I've done my duty. I've spoken my peace. He felt good about it. The pastor says, true, but charity suffereth long and is kind, brother. It beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. I have great hope of this one boy, this little boy, Robert. Some seed that we saw sow bears fruit late, but the fruit, uh, but that fruit is generally the most precious of all. The fruit doesn't always come immediately. The deacon went on his way, having said his piece. People started to arrive. The church service starts and the pastor, with a heavy heart, steps into the pulpit and preach the sermon that God had led him to preach that day. The service closed. Everyone he thought had left, and he sat in the pews by himself, looking over this old church that he spent so much time in. Many, many years of ministry. Tearful eyes in his old age, looking for some kind of encouragement, some kind of hope, some, 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 some kind of sign from the Lord to encourage him to continue on. And coming from around the corner was that young boy, Robert. He surprised the old pastor because he didn't realize that he was still there and he thought he had been alone. The young boy came up to him, waited for the pastor to acknowledge him, and the pastor looked up at him with tears in his eyes, and he said, yes, Robert. And Robert said this, do you think if I were willing to work hard for an education, I could become a preacher? That old preacher was overcome with emotion. All, all he could really get out was a preacher. Robert responded with, well, a preacher or maybe a missionary. And the pastor responded with this ending phrase. He said, this heals the ache in my heart, Robert. I see the divine hand now. May God bless you. Yes, I believe God's going to use you as a preacher. Many years pass. This old preacher is long in heaven and Robert is now an old man. And he is returning to London from Africa as an aged missionary. His name was spoken with reverence. When he went into an assembly, the people rose. He was invited into the homes of nobles. When he spoke in public, there was deep silence. He had brought under the gospel influence the most savage African chief. And he had given the translated Bible to strange tribes. 
His name is the well-known pioneer missionary Robert Moffat. The one convert of this aged pastor of that year. God doesn't promise that fruit will come immediately, but he does promise that his word will not return void. Remember, when you feel concerned of giving up, struggling with putting on and put it, putting off and putting on, and not seeing victory where you want, and you're looking to God by his grace to see that and to see it continue. Oh, remember, God bless his faithfulness. Run to the Lord. The last phrase in this passage says, Christ is all in all, verse 11. The, you, the uniqueness of the church is that Jesus is its savior. There, there is no titles, there's no distinctions, there, there's no ethnicity, there's, there's no um, a specific works greater than others than to the point of realizing that all the redeemed are friends of the redeemer. All the redeemed are, are, are the adopted children of our Heavenly Father. Christ is all in all. The church is distinguished from all rest of mankind as those in that relationship with the Redeemer, not as those who are bond or free, as civilized or uncivilized, as Greek or Jew, and, and so forth. I want to tell another uh, illustration. I know there's the last one was a little long, but I think these help establish this passage of Scripture in our own hearts. One of our ambassadors was asked to a group of students to explain what the work of an ambassador is and what it is like. And he said, well, before I say much more, all I want to do is really just, um, I want to begin by telling you first of the embassy, where that's where the ambassador would live. Um, the embassy is a little spot of America in a foreign land. And so everything within that uh, embassy is... Um, of America. Uh, so everything in there is celebrated just like America. There's there's pictures of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, Robert E. Lee and Stonewell Jackson. There's a, a big flag over all those pictures, old glory there from America. Everything within that embassy is as in America. They celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, the 4th of July. But outside, it's different. We celebrate none of these outside the embassy. The embassy is, in essence, a little spot of America in a foreign land. <clears throat> the church ought to be a little spot of heaven in an alien land. So no matter your background, no matter your social class, no matter your spiritual maturity, no matter the past life of sinful behaviors before salvation, the church is not divisive within its walls. The church is not to be known as ones that are bucking up against each other, that are fighting for control, that are full of selfishness or pride or insistence on my way uh, uh, in regards to preferences. That they unite in doctrine, they unite in the clarity of the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. They unite in the righteousness of Jesus and running to him. The church is unified under the banner of Jesus. The church is divided under the banner of selfishness and pride. The ground is level at the cross. Put aside our differences, church, the redeemed, believers. Put aside your differences. Put on righteousness. Run to Christ, depending on him and his spirit all the way. As you look to put on who he is and put off this alien land. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all. This is where we're going to stop. It was a little, uh, well, no, not all that brief. 
Uh, I didn't want to take too much more because the put on section will be much lengthier. And because it's the target of what we're supposed to put on, we need to be very specific and understand what the target is. So we'll slow down our pace. We'll come back here next Wednesday. 625 is when the live stream will begin right here on this same page. And you are welcome to join us, find a friend, and come in and um, open your Bibles to Colossians 3. We'll continue the study. We have other, um, I think the rest of chapter 3 is recorded as live streams. Um, there might be a couple actual recordings and not live streams, uh, but they're on a private uh, setting. So if you are watching this and you haven't seen them yet and you would like to, let me know. I'll see what I can do to put them on my YouTube page. Uh, if you haven't gotten a hold of uh, the Bible study for the ladies, go to my wife's YouTube page, Karis Holloway, and you'll see her Bible studies uh, there and you can enjoy those. You can also go to my YouTube page and I couldn't use my name because someone else already had it. So it is the words uh, reset, the number two, reach. Reset to reach. You'll find that on YouTube. And for the men's Bible study, just look at the playlist on that channel that's called Pursuing Victory Bible Study. And uh, you'll find a seven-step strategy to resisting temptation, overcoming sin, not just for men. Women will also enjoy that Bible study, teenagers and alike, to help you in your walk with the Lord as well. I trust this was helpful this evening. Hope to see you next Wednesday here. And for those who live in this area and are able, I look forward to either seeing you on the live stream for our church service on this page uh, or in person at church. We'll see you on Sunday or online next week. Have a great night, everyone.